Hey everybody, it's Izzy here again. A lot of times when we're making videos, we need to use a still image in our video, and we could just slap it up there and have it sit still, but that's kind of boring. We want to add some visual interest to it usually. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Well, in this video, we're going to use a technique that I call the three camera flyover effect, and it's a way of flying over a still image as if you're almost in a little miniature airplane flying over it. It's a really cool effect, and we're going to do this in Motion 5. Let me show you how to do it. So I'm going to begin in the project browser as usual. I'll choose Motion Project. For the preset, I'll use Broadcast HD 720, but you can use anything you want. I'll also use a 29.97 frame rate. And for the duration, I'm going to set it for six seconds because we're going to do three cameras for two seconds each. So that totals up to six seconds. And then I'll click Open. From here, the first thing I like to do is choose the Zoom pop-up menu here and choose to fit the canvas in my window. And I will save my project. So I'll choose File, Save As. And I'll save over a project that's already there. Save and replace. And now let's import our image. So I'll choose File, Import. And I'll choose this image, the Izzy Video Website Screenshot. And I'll move my HUD out of the way here so I can see my layers list. And you can see there's an empty group down here that I don't need anymore. This group, I'm just going to delete it on the keyboard. And by the way, this might be a good place for me to put an animated background or something like that. But if for this video, I'm just going to keep it very simple and focus only on the camera movement. So we're not going to worry about it, worry about a background or anything. I'll just select and hit delete on the keyboard. All right, let's add our first camera. I'm just going to click this create a camera button. It's going to ask me, do I want to switch the project to 3D? I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now you can see the camera runs the entire length of my project here. I have the playhead at the very beginning. I want to move it to two seconds in. The fast way to do that is just to double click on the time code and type two period and then return on the keyboard. Now you can see the playhead is two seconds into the project. And with this camera layer still selected, I'm going to click O on the keyboard and that creates an out point for that layer. So now this camera is only there for two seconds and that's fine. That's exactly what we want. I'll move the playhead to the very beginning. I'll go to the inspector. And I am going to set a keyframe next to position and next to rotation underneath the properties inspector. Also, right now you can see, I'm going to move the head up here, and you can see that the camera type is framing. A framing camera, it makes it very easy to keep your subject in the frame. So for example, if I click and drag on this rotate control, you can see that as I rotate, it's very easy to keep that page in the frame. And that's kind of a cool effect there, right? Well, I'm not going to use the framing behavior yet. What I'm going to do, I'm going to Command-Z to undo. What I'm going to do is change the camera type to a viewpoint camera. And what this does is it is sort of like a camera on the head of a tripod. You can tilt the camera up and down. You can pan it left and right. In fact, let me show you. I'm going to rotate here up and down. And you can see that it's sort of like I'm nodding my head there. You see how I'm sort of nodding my head? or I can shake my head back and forth. Okay, that's how the camera behaves when it's a when it's a viewpoint camera. And that's what I'm going to use for this project here. To keep it, make it easy for me to see what I'm doing, I'm going to make sure I always keep it a little bit in the frame. And so I've rotated away, and now I'm going to move it down. And uh, in fact, let me hold down the shift key. And this is a good hint. When you hold down the shift key and click and drag on these little camera controls, it makes the movements bigger. So if you need to move a lot more, you can do this. Okay, so I'm going to get in real close. I'm just going to zoom in using this control, which is the dolly control. And I'm going to move over. And let's go ahead and tilt a little bit here. I'm going to hold down the option key and click and drag to tilt. Yeah, in fact, uh, maybe I won't hold down the option key. The option key makes the movement smaller. The shift key makes the movement bigger. Okay. Hmm, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down even lower. Yep, like this and shift to click down. Now I can find my initial position, maybe something like this. Then I'll rotate. How about if we start here and then we fly over? So you can see that I've got keyframes here. Because I set the keyframes and then made the adjustments, the values are locked for this specific frame. Now let's go to the end of our layer. I'm going to shift as I drag. I'm going to hold down shift as I drag. That'll lock the playhead to the end of the layer there. And now let's set our final position for this camera. I think what I'll do is I'll zoom. So I'll hold down Shift and zoom, dolly in. But then I'm also going to move over this way, maybe up towards the Want to Learn Video ad there. And I'll adjust the rotation a little bit. And once again, move over. OK, let's see how that looks. Move the 
HUD out of the way a little bit and move the playhead. So it's going to pan like this. Yeah. OK, let's see it in real time, spacebar. OK, that's a nice little flyover effect. Now let's not worry about the details of the movement yet. Let's create the new camera. We're going to adjust the way the keyframes are interpolated there in a minute. OK, so to create the new camera, I'm going to move the playhead to the end of the layer. and I'm going to go forward one frame, so I'm at two seconds and one frame, which is the first frame after the previous camera ends, and I'll create a new camera. And it takes up the whole layer once again, so I'll hit I on the keyboard to begin the camera layer there. I'll go to four seconds, four, period, return, and hit O on the keyboard to end that layer. I'll move the playhead to the beginning, shift I to lock it there. Now I want this camera to be very different from the other one. I don't want it to be even close to it. So I'm going to come at it from a different angle. So for this first position, let's go ahead and lock the keyframe here. I'm going to lock position, lock rotation, and I'm going to adjust where this camera is. Let's see, where should we go? How about if we go backwards and we go down and we rotate a little bit like this, and then we go over, maybe like that. So we're going to come over from the right angle. In fact, let me get in a little bit closer here. OK, so that seems like a good starting position to be very different from the other camera movement. Now I'll move to the end of my layer, holding down the shift so I lock to the very last frame of that layer. And let's set our B position here. So this is the, the second one. I'm going to go up a little bit over here, and I'm going to zoom in. In fact, I'll hold down the Shift key. Shift makes it go faster. Option makes it go slower when you're moving the camera around using these controls. Let's see how that movement looks. So this is the first camera. Here's the second camera. Yeah, I like that. That seems really good. Let's create our third camera now. I'm going to click on the Create a Camera button, make sure that my playhead is right on four seconds in one frame, which it is right now. Let's create that camera, and I'll hit I on the keyboard to create the first frame of that camera layer. And incidentally, whatever camera is on top in motion is what's displayed in the active camera window. For this one, let's make it very, very different. I'll go to Properties. I'll set a keyframe on position and on rotation, and then let's reset the camera position. So the way that you do that is you can just double click on any of these camera controls like this, and you can see that the camera is now repositioned. It's reset. I think what I want to do for this last camera is start in pretty close and then kind of pull out to give us some a wider perspective of what this is. So I'm going to hold down the shift and click and drag to zoom in. And I'll reposition it, maybe something like this. Let's see how that compares to the last frame of the previous camera. So it's kind of the same subject, just a different perspective. I think that's a big enough change where it's fine. I'll hold down the Shift key as I click and drag to make sure it locks to that point. So let's say that's the starting position. In fact, let's add a little bit of rotation to it, too. So I'm going to just kind of nod up and down here. And I'll reposition this up. There we go. So that'll be the new A position. Now I'm going to move the playhead to the very end, the very end of the project here. And now it's time for me to zoom out. So let's go ahead and pull out here and reposition to give ourselves a little bit better perspective. I'm not sure that's far enough. Let's see. So it starts in close, pulls out. That's looking pretty good. I think I want it to go a little further out. So let's pull out a little further and let's also rotate slightly more. Whoop, that's too much of a rotation. I was holding down the shift key by accident. Don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, let's see how this looks. There we go. Now, one thing you'll notice is as this plays, you'll can see, you can see that the camera starts from a stopping position, a stop position, and then it slows down and comes to a stop on each one of the angles. Well, I don't really want that. I want it to play just be linear animation. And what that is is interpolation. Now, I don't want to get into the details of the keyframe editor for this video. That'll make it way too long. This, uh, the keyframe editor could easily have an hour's worth of training. Here's how you get to it, first of all. I did this without even describing it. So before, I might be using my timeline. You can just click this button to close it down, and then click this button to open up the keyframe editor. And then whatever you have selected here, Command-Z to undo. I accidentally moved that. 
whatever you have selected, the parameters show up down here in the keyframe editor. And you can just select all the parameters. I'm going to click on the first one and click on the last one. And I'm going to change the interpolation. I don't want these curves here. These curves are what make the movement smooth. I want it to be linear. So what I can do is just click on this little pop-up window, go to interpolation, and change it to linear. Instead of Bezier, I want everything to be linear, everything. In fact, I can select these other two cameras at the same time. I'm just going to shift click on these other two. And now I can do the same thing to all of the parameters for both of, a, both of the different cameras at the same time. I'm going to shift click to select everything, choose any of these pop-up menus, go to interpolation and change it to linear. Now I've changed all of the curves for every single one of the cameras. Everything is all linear. And now let's see what it looks like. I'm going to click outside in the open area to deselect everything. I'll close down the keyframe editor. And now I'm going to move the playhead to the beginning and hit the space bar. And you'll see that it's a much more of a linear movement here as it cuts from one angle to another one. There we go. That is the three camera flyover effect. It's not something you would use on every project, of course. But it's interesting to know that it can be done in Motion 5 pretty easily to make a still image look more interesting than it would be if it just sat there. Hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. I'll see you in the next video.